this is June Fernando and I'm from Ramfer Financials. First of all, allow me to say thank you to all of you who have so far been very active in participating in this Alveo Wellness event. Thank you so much also for taking time out of your very hectic schedules to check out what we have in store for all of you. Let me introduce to you our company before we begin with our topic for today. Our company, Ramper Financials, came from two words. First is ramp, a slope that leads from one point to another. It actually signifies our role as enablers. We'd like our clients to think that if they deal with us, we will link them up and connect them to the right products and services that will match their objectives and goals financially. Ultimately, it can help them fulfill their financial dreams easily. The second word is ver. It's from the Latin word meaning veritas. It's the state of being true, honest, and real. In Ramper Financials, what you see is what you get. There are no fine prints. We always take time to discuss to our clients the pros and cons of each option so that he'd be able to decide more objectively. You know, in Ramper Financials, we take pride in the fact that our unique value proposition is that we're a one-stop shop for all your financial services and needs. We can cater to investments, insurance, non-life, healthcare, HMO, commercial paper placements, direct stock trading investments, and a whole lot more. The idea is you'd be conveniently assisted by and coached by a financial advisor who you can have access to the different products and services that I've mentioned earlier. Rampver started its operations in September 1, 1993, and to this day, we're known in the industry to be the biggest mutual fund distributor in the Philippines. That is Rampver Financials, ladies and gentlemen. And for that reason, I'd also like to be able to share with you a glimpse of what we offer our clients and partners. This is the complete and the total financial journey that we always discuss with them every time a client approaches us. So for today, I hope you can sit back, relax, and learn as much as you can as we take you through this financial journey template. Now, what exactly is an ideal financial journey? There are three life stages of man. First is man at work. Second stage is man and money at work. And the third stage is money at work. Now, let's go through these three life stages of man. First is man at work. We all need to start somewhere. We have to build our careers. We have to start building and developing our specializations. It's the time when we have to identify our priorities, our dreams, our goals, and then work hard for it. This is also the time when you should be taking advantage of your young age because it's the time when you can do more of these side hustles and improve on the level of your earnings or income on a regular basis. In short, it's your time to really accumulate as much as you can. Now let's talk about man and money at work. At this stage, you have to be able to identify how much money you've already accumulated from your early years. It is the best time for you to sit down and seriously come up and set up plans and objectives for your future. What are these? What are these goals? What are your priorities? Is it for your retirement? Is it for a child's future education? For a wedding budget? and a whole lot more. At this stage, you have to be able to carefully identify as well what would be your possible investment options. It is the best time for you to let your savings grow. Don't just let your savings be put to waste by leaving them in low yielding instruments like our usual deposit placements. 
it's very important that you get to talk to a real financial practitioner like in the form of a financial planner or consultant and even an advisor who can really handhold you in this investment process. This person has the expertise and will always be able to have the time to sit down with you and discuss particulars like for example, what are your different investment options? You don't need to do the research by yourself. You don't need to spend hours and hours trying to review and trying to compare one product from the other. By having these financial planners and financial advisors, they can actually guide you properly towards the right instruments that can help you grow your money through time. At this time, it's also as important that you really take time to set up your goals. What are your objectives in the future? Is it for a dream retirement? How much do you really target in terms of retirement money? How much do you think will you need to be able to have as a retirement fund so that it can help you live comfortably in the future? Or is it also a dream house? Speaking of which, it is at this stage when you have to seriously think about having your own place. I've seen a lot of great deals these days, especially during this pandemic when all of the payment terms have gone so low. It's so attractive for you not to take it. It is for the same reason that you really need to talk to your financial advisors or to your property specialists, especially those who have invited you in this event, they will be able to take you through the different options, the pros and cons of each, and who can really direct you towards what's going to be best for you, your objectives, and that can also match your needs later on. Don't do this alone. You see, it's not just simply depositing a money and letting it grow through time. Real estate can be used for many things like for example, yes, as a dream place to be in, to live comfortably in the future, or you can use it also as an investment instrument that can complement your existing financial portfolio. It's one of these hard assets that is very stable and that can promise you good yields over time. There are so many ways for you to earn from your real estate investments. That's why it's very important for you as well to talk to your property specialists and bankers to see what payment schemes are available for you. You don't have to pay as much. You can do a very low down payment and amortize it very lightly on a monthly basis. And by doing so, you can take advantage of the fact that even if you aren't able to pay yet that full amount, that big amount that is required of us investors, your property has already started to earn. You can also do some flipping after some time if you feel that for now, you aren't sure yet what you want to happen with that certain property. Maybe you can live on it or maybe you can use it as an investment or even rent it out for lease income. As a rule of thumb though, you can take advantage of all of these promos, of all of these good deals out there with real estate investing. But don't go beyond 25% of your total income. This assures you that whatever happens, your cash flow won't get affected. And at the same time, you can really maximize the earnings potentials of your funds through real estate investing. Another objective that you can consider planning for would be your child's education. Well, many of you may still be single by now, but for those of you who are planning to get married later on, then it's also very crucial for you to start planning for your child's educational needs. Of course, we all want the best education for our children. That's why it's very important for us to identify how much we are trying to target as a budget for his educational needs. Will he be able to enroll in the top three universities of the Philippines? Or would you want it just low-key? 
these are the things that you need to identify when you sit down and plan for your future. Aside from all of these objectives, you can also list down all your other dreams and objectives that you want to happen. And don't forget to also put the corresponding timeline or target dates that you want them accomplished. Having said this leads us to the third life stage and that is about money at work. We don't need to explain this any further, right? But it is at this stage that you don't need to work so hard anymore, although you still have the option to continue doing so, but it's no longer required in order for you to survive because the idea is it's your money that's supposed to be working hard for you already. Having reached this stage means that we've also grown older. And when we're older, isn't it that we don't have that much energy to work harder anymore? Much as we do when we were still a little bit younger. So that's the time when we should all be relying on the growth of the investments that we've made through the years through the earnings that were accumulated by all of the investment activities that we've done for the past two stages, now is the time for us to rely on all of these earnings, on all of these gains, so much so that it will sustain us in our living expenses for the rest of our lives. And so you see, it's not as simple as sitting down, trying to identify where to deposit your money, where best to invest your funds that's going to be important. It's very crucial that we go through all of these three life stages properly. And the only way for us to do that is through proper financial planning. What is financial planning by the way? Simply put, it's the process of meeting life's goals and objectives through the proper management of one's resources. Financial planning provides direction and meaning to your financial decisions. While we won't have much time to be able to discuss this thoroughly one by one, but there are five important areas of the financial planning process. First is investment planning. Second is retirement planning. The third is tax planning. The fourth is protection planning. And last but not the least is estate planning. And since we're already talking about money management, let's talk about investing. When you invest, you need to identify if that certain investment instrument really does beat inflation rate and if it can really help you achieve your financial goals and objectives. What else do we need to consider when we're investing? Of course, on top of the list would be our goals, our dreams, and objectives. We've talked about this thoroughly earlier. The second one is your time horizon. How long can you park your funds? Is it for long term? for short term or for medium term. When you talk about long term investing, it's supposed to be 10 years and beyond. And when you talk about short term investing, it should be one year below. But when you talk about medium term investing, it must be around two to five years in terms of time frame. The third consideration that you should also be thinking about must be your risk appetite. We've mentioned this also earlier, but do you already know what your investor risk appetite really is? Let's take a quick quiz on this. Are you ready? Now I'll give you 10 seconds to get your own pen and paper. Alright, are you ready? Now, let's take this simple quiz together. By the end of this quiz, we will now be able to identify if we are a conservative, an aggressive, or a moderate type of investor. So, are you ready? Let us begin. Number one, I am comfortable making investment decisions on my own. The choices are answer A, if always, B, if sometimes, and C, if never. Second question, I would be willing to go into debt to make an investment that would double my money. Answer A, if you are very willing. Answer B, if you are slightly willing. And C, if not at all. Third question, if I invested in a stock that went up by 50%,
I would A. Buy more B. Sell some and C. Sell all Fourth is I believe in luck or in Tagalog, swerte A. Definitely B. Sometimes and C. No Number five question is if I were one of five finalists in a raffle that will win 1 million pesos, I would sell my chance to win 1 million pesos for 150,000 pesos. A. Never B. Maybe and C. Yes Number 6 I realize that there is a trade-off between risk and reward. I am willing to accept higher risk where there is a potential to receive higher rewards. A. Yes. B. Maybe. Or C. No. Seventh question is, I am more comfortable knowing that I have a guaranteed rate of return even if it means I may have to work longer until retirement or even work on retirement. Answer A if no, B if maybe, and C if yes. Number 8. No copying here. My age is A. Less than 25, B. 26 to 45 years old, and C. 46 years old and up. Number 9. I think people who plan out their investment and pay careful attention will always succeed. A. No. B. Sometimes. And C. Yes. And last question for this quiz is, I am willing to part my money for A. 5 years or more. B. 2 to 4 years. C. 1 year or below. Alright, pens up! Pass your papers! Okay, now let's score ourselves. Give yourself one point for all your answers that are letter A. Give yourselves two points for all your answers that are letter B. And give three points for all your letter C answers. Okay, now it's time to score. If you scored below 9 points, then you are an aggressive investor. If you scored 10 to 20, then you're considered a moderate type of investor. And if you've scored 21 points above, then you're considered a conservative investor. So, are you happy now that you know what kind of investor are you? what your risk appetite is in reality sometimes we get to meet clients who want to earn aggressively but when we ask them to take all of these exams it turns out that they're risk averse so it's very important that at the onset we also try to identify what kind of investor are we before we think about investing our money because different products would also have different investment objectives and it's very crucial that we find the right product that can also match the kind of investor that we are.